through. All right, inequalities and absolute value. Here we go. Inequalities. Let's review these symbols, even though we've already done them once this year. Remember, less than, greater than. Less than always points. It always points to the thing that's less than. always opens up to the thing that's bigger than. Greater than or equal to, also known as no less than. Less than or equal to, also known as no more than. And this one that we didn't work with, not equal to. All right? The inequality always opens up to the bigger a value. Let's do some. Mr. Bruss is broke, ain't that the truth? He has less than $9 in his wallet. So let's see, Bruss, we'll count that as the money he has, and nine, that's like our boundary marker, right? He has less than $9 in his wallet. Less than $9 in his wallet. Let's see if we can't graph that. Start with nine, 10, 11, eight, seven. So I'm starting at nine, should I include nine? Does he have nine? No, he doesn't. He has less than nine. But I have to start at nine because that's my boundary. Immediately at $8.99, that's a possibility. So I include this as a boundary marker, but I don't shade it in. All right, I want everything less than nine. That's this way. Whoa, horrible arrow. All right, so now it could be any of these numbers. Is seven less than nine? It sure is. Is 10 less than nine? No, that's why we didn't shade in that side. Kelly has no less than $5 in his wallet. Kelly has no less than five. We know five is going to be our boundary. Let's go six and seven. Let's go four and three. All right. Could he have five dollars? Yes, because he has no less than five dollars. So five dollars could be a possibility. So let's make that included. That means we know we're going to do this. He has no less than five. That means he's got to have more than five, right? So all the numbers more than five go that way. All right, let's try the last one. Sully does not have $8. So we know our boundary is going to be $8. 8, 9, 10, 7, 6. All right, we know he doesn't have 8, so we're not including it. Could he have 7? Yes. That means he could have everything on this side. Could he have 9? Yes. In fact, he could have anything except for $8, so Sully does not have, does not equal $8. All right? All right, so let's talk about graphing inequalities. When should we have an open dot? Well, when should we have an open dot? When it's greater than, when it's less than. In other words, when it doesn't have that the equal to part or not equal to. Any of those times, we're going to have an open dot. When should you have a closed dot? The exact opposite. All right, and if we were graphing in equals, we could do that too. That would be closed dots. All right, so let's graph one. X is greater than negative 7. So I'm going to start at my boundaries, negative 7. Remember, with negatives, they increase to the right, just like all numbers, but it looks like that number is uh, smaller, right? Remember, that's not true with negatives. It's the opposite. So my boundary is at 7. It's open circle because it is not equal to. I want all the numbers greater than that. All the numbers greater are to the right. Do the next one. I have 14, 15, 13. All right, my boundary is 14, and I'm going to include it. It's a closed dot because it could be equal to it. I want all the numbers less than. All the numbers less than go that way. All right, let's come up here. Negative 8, uh, negative 7, and negative 9. I'm going to not include it because it's an open dot, and it could be on either side. In this case, everything's the correct answer except negative 8. All right, now let's try some that are on the opposite side here. See, the variable is going to be on the opposite side. So it says negative 7 is less than x. So I'm still starting with negative 7, negative 6, negative 8. All right, and I know it's going to be open circle. Now I'm going to read this starting with my variable, x. x is, it opens up, so it's x is greater than negative 7. So x is greater than negative 7 is going this way. Notice. These two are the exact same graphs. That means they're exact, exactly the same. It's just flipped. It's like saying 8 is A or A is 8. It's the same thing, only this time when we flip it, I have to reverse the symbol. See, it's always opening to X. It's always opening to X. So down here, 
Look at these two, they're the same. It's pointing at G, it's pointing at G. So these two graphs should be the same. Let's take a look. 14, 15, 13, close dot at 14. And now let's read it. I want all the numbers that are less than or equal to 14, all the numbers less than or equal to 14, go that way. All right, so there are two ways you can see these done now. And uh, you need to be, rec be able to recognize both. All right, let's flip it now. So if we flip this, okay, I'm going to start with my boundary. So I need to write the inequality. So I know x and 2. I'm going to start with that. Now it's an open circle, so I'm not going to have a greater or an equal to. And I want everything to the left. All these numbers are less than 2, so x is less than 2. Down here, now you don't have to always use x. I just tend to. Let's say h. And negative 2 is my boundary. It's closed, so I know it's going to be an equal to 1. I want all the numbers greater than or equal to negative 2. All right? All right, absolute value. Absolute value is the distance a number is from 0. For example, I want to know the absolute value of 5. All right, the absolute value of 5. So I go to 5. Here I am at 5. And I count how many, what's the distance to 0? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now I want left, so a lot of you think, oh, that's negative. Left is not negative. When I'm counting distance, distance can never be negative. All right, if you're driving on the road, you see those kilometers or mile signs, like from uh, you drive the airport, you see the Frankfurt Airport, 60 kilometers, right? You never see negative 60 once you drive past it. You're still three miles from the airport or whatever you've driven past. Distance is never negative. Since distance is never negative, absolute value is always going to be positive. That's why this is awesome. This is absolutely the easiest thing you could ever do in math. Start at negative 3. What's the distance from negative 3 to 0? 1, 2, 3. Again, positive. So if I put a positive in, I get a positive. If I put a negative in, I get a positive. It's like a washing machine. If I put in dirty clothes, a negative number, they're going to come out clean, positive. If I put in positive clothes, clean clothes, if I put clean clothes in the washer, they're going to come out clean. All right? This is awesome because it's easy. Let's see how easy this is. Let's do these. Easiest thing you're ever going to do in Algebra 1. What is the absolute value of negative 0.5? Well, it always comes out positive, 0.5. What's the absolute value of 1 half? It always comes out positive, 1 half. See, a lot of people always want to switch the sign. It doesn't switch the sign. It just makes it positive. Absolute value of 126, 126. Don't overthink it. When you see these bars, take whatever number's inside, set it equal to positive. Boom. Okay? Now, because of that, now we're going to get to do some fun stuff with it. All right. So now I want to know what we're doing kind of the opposite, right? What can I put in for x so that when I get it, it comes out as 5? So this is, now I'm going to start at 0 and measure out 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, 5 units away from 0 is 5. But wait, I could also go 5 this way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the absolute value of x equal to 5, there's two numbers I could put in there. 5 or negative 5. Let's check them. What's the absolute value of 5? 5. Perfect. What's the absolute value of negative 5? 5. That's why we have the two answers. Let's try 4. All right. Distance from 0. 1, 2, 3, 4. I could get to 4. Or 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. I could put both those in and come out as a positive. All right. How about z equals negative 3? Well, let's start at 0. Can I measure negative? No. I can never have something inside the absolute value bars and it come out negative. Therefore, that is a no solution. And that's something you need to recognize. Anytime the absolute value bars are equal to a negative, it's a no solution. All right? All right, so I want you to pause the video and try these. Actually, I want you to do these. All right, so let's try these, uh, let's do these. I'm going to show you why I want you to do these instead of try these in a second. All right, so translate and grab. Bruss and Kelly have no more than 12 kids combined. So let's see, combined, 12 kids. They have no more than. All right, could they have 12 kids? Yes. 
but they have less than or equal to 12. I'm going to graph it. My boundary is 12. Close circle, and I want everything less than. Boom, less than is this way. All right, graph negative 5 is greater than y, so my boundary is going to be negative 5, and it's an open circle. All right, I want, now I have to read it funny, I want all the numbers that are less than negative 5. All the numbers less than negative 5 go this way. And last but not least, solve. What's the absolute value of x to equal 8? What are two numbers I could put in for x? They would come out 8. I could put in 8, or I could put in negative 8. All right, there you have it. So why do I say do these and not try these? Well, famous, famous quote, famous wisdom from one of the sm smartest guys of all time. Here it is. Always with you what cannot be done. Hear you nothing that I say. You must unlearn what you have learned. All right, I'll give it a try. No. Try not. Do. Or do not. There is no try. <laughs>